2016, 1.6 billion views. That's a lot. By the way, saying 2016, did you know, um, you, maybe you've seen this on social media, it's just a natural passage of time, right? People are now nostalgic for 2016. There was a tweet that went viral, or maybe it was a TikTok, and it was like the worst day in 2016 to 2019, and it's just like uh, Ryan Gosling laughing, being on a date, having an amazing time. And then someone tweeted, like, why are people so nostalgic for 2016? And then a bunch of people started weighing in and they were like, things back then just seemed like they were more free and more open and like the world was full of possibilities. And then you realize that they're wrong. The first alarm of the like three alarm chili is realizing that they're wrong. 2016 as an adult was messed up, bro. That was the year John Oliver built the 2016... Uh, like monument and then kicked it over and blew it up with some dynamite, right? 2016 for a lot of people was like the, it, it was the, the rage against the machine, wake up, like things are freaking suck this year. But then the second alarm is realizing that like, that's the way that I feel about like 2005. And I was probably wrong. You know, I would, I, I, I've talked about that with my parents before, like for their generation. Like sometimes my parents will be like, you know, why, why are young people so, what's the word? Discontented is probably the best way to say it. Discontented. And I'm like, well, you know, the economic conditions that were there when they were children are like not there as an adult. So it kind of feels like they got promised like a fall uh, of a bad deal and stuff like that. And there's, you know, like, it seems like global conflict is, is kicking off again and stuff like that. And I'm like, it's true. But at the same time, I'm talking to my mom and she's like, you know, yeah, we had that. We had like the Cuban Missile Crisis. It seemed like the whole world was going to, uh, you know, get erupted into nuclear war at any given moment. And now people are like, OK, Boomer, you wouldn't know what it's like. And I'm like, well, mom, they didn't. OK, like stop having trauma about the Cuban Missile Crisis, OK, because that shit did not pop off. How long are you going to milk that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you were seven years old, you thought you were going to die in like nuclear hellfire. Well, it didn't happen. So get over it, people. I guess that's what it's always like, you know? You're all, you false, you are probably going to be nostalgic for a period in your life when you were young. Maybe it'll be high school, maybe it'll be college, maybe it'll be just after that. Maybe it'll be like, you know, earlier childhood. Right? I think we, we naturally think that it's the time that we're nostalgic for, but it's the age, you know? It's not the time, it's the age. I'm sure if I was like 27 in 2005, I'd be like, what the fuck? We just started four more years with George W. Bush. This is so fucking fucked, man. I'm starting to think the Iraq war is not going to end in 18 months. But because I was like, you know, 15, 16, 17, I was like, Pog, driving to the movie theater to watch Talladega Nights. Things were so much simpler back then. Doubles for money and checks for free. I have a brain worm right now associated with... Uh, Dire Straits, Money for Nothing. Every time it comes to the chorus, the did you see the Mr. Beast food truck in the Middle East where Mr. Beast has like the, like I don't even know the name of the headwear, but he's advertising the kebab food truck. Every time I like the chorus comes on, I see Mr. Beast going like this. And just all that pops into my head is, We've got to, inshallah, Michael Wade oven. And I don't know what it is, but it just, it worked its way in there. Like a, a lightning bolt hit me in my cerebellum and it can't get out, man. Custom kitchen delivery. <laughs> Can you do the Mr. Beast smile? How was that? Is that from something? It's from my own twisted, the twisted mind of Tim Burton, a.k.a. me. Wanted. Poster. Well, okay, it sounds like you should go to the poster store, my dude. Economy fans are feasting as a, an explosion in a metal factory rocked a small town in California earlier today. Did you see the tweet that said, no way, man, journalism is washed? And then it was ABC's Inside Edition, and there was a, a teenager dying of disease. Day. And since BJ can't really get to the movies, 
we brought the movies to him. Popcorn in a movie, Mission Impossible 5. Awesome. And there were plenty of friends to keep BJ company during the show. For a teen who's had so many days he'd probably like to forget, this was a day to remember. Ultimately, BJ's battle against cancer was Mission Impossible. They gave him like a, a little opportunity to watch Mission Impossible early with his friends. Right after, they, it was like an inspiring moment, right? He gets to watch a new movie with his friends. Right after the movie ends, they segue to an image of him like in bed and they say, sadly, survival was also a Mission Impossible for Bradley as he passed away. And you're like, this is a person's life and you it's like you wrote the segue before you actually wrote the rest like what are the odds that they picked the movie based on a pun that the writer had in their head that's messed up like they were probably gonna make him watch like ruby sparks or something like that then someone was like nah bro just trust me mission impossible 5 rogue nation is gonna be perfect for this that is not a plus two, is it? It was messed up, bro. Did you see? I, here's all I'm going to say, okay? As long as we're making enemies here at the end of the acetylcholine stream. Did you see? Um, there was a, a report that came out and that got, it went pseudo viral on Twitter. And it was like um, every polyvinyl bag, reusable bag created is actually like more destructive to the environment than something like, you know, using a thousand of the plastic bags that just got banned. And then in the in the chain of what aboutism, so many people replied to that and said we stopped using single use plastics because they were getting into the ocean. And then the person replied to them and said actually like 78% of all microplastics created come from tire dust, which is something I did not know. Then they said, yeah, but the tire dust is not getting into the turtles' noses. And then they replied with like a scientific journal that was like the microplastics are being eaten by like the phytoplankton, which is then getting uh, bioamplified up the food chain and like killing whales and stuff like that. Holy man. So can, if we're all in this together, can you at least stop looking at me like I'm an environmental terrorist when I forget to bring my reusable bags to the grocery store? The, I don't mind bringing the bags, okay? We either have them in the trunk. What's ironic is they should look at me like an asshole for driving because my tire dust is getting into the ocean and killing like blue whales. Or I'll walk to the grocery store and I'll take the reusable bags. But if you ever are like, I don't have any bags, everybody looks at you like you're an actual like terrorist, like you've committed a crime against the environment. It's got to be the calculus on it has to be like, it's not that much effort, but the effort to reward ratio is actually like 0. 0.00000001. It's crazy, man. I'm in rural Pennsylvania. They'll give us free plastic bags for no reason. Shit, have I become the guy that's just going to say base to that? I don't know. It always makes me laugh, too, because, like, they don't sell plastic bags anymore, but everybody's in the produce section grabbing single-use plastic bags and putting, like, four grapes into the plastic bag because I don't like when the grapes touch the oranges. That's just gross. So then, they like, it, it doesn't make any sense, bro. There's hypocrisy everywhere. And then when you buy meat, they're like, do you want to put a plastic bag around the meat? And I'm like, no, that's fine. And they're like, I'm just going to do it anyway. And I'm like, well, that way do you, you leave H Mart and they gave you like 12 plastic bags that you didn't even want. But you have to have reusable bags, otherwise you gotta carry all the stuff out to your car like Fred Flintstone. Well, yabba dabba do, brother! Yabba dabba do! Yeah, yeah, I saw your comment about me having a private jet. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm being the nice guy. I'm telling you that I saw it so you don't have to feel like you have to post it again. He didn't even read the comment, right? I don't exist to, to read your comment, okay? If you want that, get uh, the chat GPT they use for spell check XYZ, assuming it hasn't been hit with the Reddit hug of death. If you want the comment to be read exactly right, write better comments, okay? And there's two ways you can do that. 
You can either write the greatest comment of all time that makes me laugh, and then I'll, I'll read it out loud. Or alternatively, you could build up a, a reputation of being a decent chatter over a long time frame, and then I'll read everything you type for the rest of your life. Now, only like four people have ever reached that level in chat. It's one of those things, if you're part of the instant gratification generation, you're not going to like it, okay? Because it's going to take you like months and months to get to that point at the best. Hot boy toke, they're, they're on track, okay? They're on track for a promotion. When they type stuff like gay Jar Jar Binks be like, Miso wanna sucka ya caca? <laughs> what about scath eyes? I worry about them a little bit. Not because um, of what they type in chat, but because of the fact that in Apollo's chat, they're just normal. And they've been keeping up the Northern Lion harem bit here for literally like three or four years, which is like the kind of sustenance of a bit that can only be indicative of genius or like unchecked mental illness. That's not me like trying to punch down. That's me being like genuine. <laughs> Holy! My daughter deciding on her Halloween costume be like, it's unicorn time. Did you see the tweet with Stephen A. Smith uh, talking about which of the Pokemon starters he likes? Where he's like, I like Charizard. Charizard I like. The fire breath, the wings. He's more versatile than your Blastoise or your Venusaur. And then the, the quote tweet was like, me trying not to cry, finding out my wife is cheating on me, and then my five-year-old son in the backseat of my GMC Sierra. It's actually the, the perfect encapsulation of what social media could be. You know what? I kind of like Charizard. Um, the fire on the tail, the wings, he can fly, the claws on his feet, he could use that as a weapon. He's not as limited as Blastoise or Venusaur. If we would all just allow ourselves to have fun, it's, a, it's an absolutely great recontextualization of an already great video. You still watching Traders? I think your boy's getting ousted. Uh, it, he's got a lot of heat on him, but I'm praying that it's just editing. I heard they got your boy on Traders Crimes. Yeah, yeah, the one you was hanging with. I heard you grew up together. Really got him on traitor's crimes? You didn't know a thing? You didn't feel anything? No guilt or nothing? <laughs> oh, man. I think you're pretty good. The boy that you was hanging with! <laughs> oh, dude, what a, what a video. Hey, you know they got your mask. They got your mans on sex assault charges. Yeah, the nigga you be hanging with. <laughs> the nigga you be hanging with. <laughs> oh, yeah, sex offender. And he was your mans. He was your boy. That's <laughs> how you grew up with him. That's crazy, man. You ain't know what he was doing. You ain't feel bad at all. That was your mans. I always, every time I see that video, which is every time it pops up in my feed because I watch it literally every single time, I'm always like, is it a skit? Or was some dude just filming inside of a pawn shop? Because it's like, it's, it's so perfect. It has to be a skit, right? It's a skit? Is the other dude in on the skit or is he just stirring the pot? The dude who's like, uh, I heard you grew up with him. I don't think the other dude had any idea what was going on. That's sick. That's I love that. Have you seen the YouTube video that's like top five conspiracies? And the first one is that Gandhi is Jack the Ripper. Hang on, this is like, remember those aliens who looked like uh, shit and I said that they looked too bad to be fake because if you were faking it, you would make it look more real. It's one of those things that's like, it's so crazy that I'm like, I'll hear you out. That's, that's bold thinking. Gandhi is Jack the Ripper. Okay, can you speak on that a little bit? The proof is that God, Gandhi studied in England when the murders happened. Open and shut case, lads. We got him. <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy, too, because when, like, when I think about Gandhi, I think about him living in, like, the 1950s, I guess. When I think about Jack the Ripper, that dude is living in, like, Sherlock Holmes times. 
Like he's got like a, a top hat where he goes like this. After he does the murders, he goes, and a little cape comes down when he does. And then he throws like a little smoke grenade on the ground and it goes like poof. And then he's, where did he go? Where did he go? And then Gandhi was like, he was probably driving around in cars and shit, man. That's crazy. Gandhi famously didn't know how to drive. What are you talking about famously? That's got to be like the 19th most known fact about Gandhi. A, he's bald. B, he's Indian. C, bro was like nonviolent. Four, somehow still love nuclear war according to civilization. Fifth, I don't really want to get into his sleeping habits. I don't know about the nuance, but it's definitely something that people always bring up when it comes to Gandhi. Number six, Ben Kingsley. Maybe number seven doesn't know how to drive, okay? What does mana do? It does what it says on the card, which is, well, you, you get the pack in for yourself, by the way. It's already out. We're having a little bit of drama on Twitter. Somebody tweeted me a Dean Norris meme, and it was me when the sap pack comes out. Me when I find out the sap pack is $10. And then someone replied, um, maybe you'd have more disposable income if you didn't spend $8 a month on Twitter. And that dude did not like receiving that message for sure he replied and then replied to himself I, I believe that they replied mfs will really pay 2x a twitter blue subscription for netflix just to watch one movie a month and forget about it but i'm not allowed to spend eight dollars a month on a platform that i use every day just to expand my reach and then someone replied to that and said, bold new argument strategy, make up a Netflix guy to get mad at. And I have to feel like that he's not going to like that message when he reads that either. I'm just, I'm, I'm off on the sidelines, okay? I just made, the, I, I made a tweet that says it's update day and all of a sudden I'm like, uh, my, my mentions are a battlefield here. I don't have to take a side. Now in my head, have I taken a side? Of course. But I, don't, I publicly don't have to take a side. That's an unforced error. All I would say is that without getting too serious about it, I don't think that you should have to pay $8 to expand your reach on a social media platform. I think that it should be a meritocracy. I think that the swaggiest dudes and the hottest chicks should naturally rise to the top just because that's the way that uh, the world works. So that's the way the internet should work as well. I don't think it should be determined based on, you know, who gives eight extra dollars a month to Elon Musk. You know, we're all crushed under the same boot. Just got back from Costco. What did I miss? Can I tell you something? This question comes up all the time. You have never missed anything. I've been telling you it for years. I'm not trying to uh, be derogatory towards you or my own career, but every stream is the same. This is not Breaking Bad, you know, this is not Infinity War, I went to the bathroom, did I miss Gulp Shitto coming up? This is the radio. You don't get in your car, turn on the radio, and then call your friend and go, hey, I was 10 minutes late to the radio this morning, what did I miss? They played the same songs, they played the hits, they played some advertisements for local car dealerships. There was some paid promotion, and you know, we, we, we all had a reasonably good time. Vampire bat! Okay, this is where we, we pivot the whole run. You say that, but you missed one stream, and now everyone's saying Hemomancer? I suppose there is some truth to that. You, when you miss a day of school, and then all your friends have a new inside joke by the time you come back, you're like, what the hell? <laughs> everyone's saying, hurt me more, and then you say, hurt me more, and people are like, don't say that. You don't know what that is. And I'm like, you guys were all saying it. They're like, yeah, we were there when the... When they said, hurt me more. We all have that shared experience. You're trying to get stolen valor by saying, hurt me more. Hey, Anel, I showed my wife the Hemomancer TikTok and it gave her the ick. Have you seen the TikTok account that is guy making a list? And it's the, listen, don't take this too seriously, okay? But it's, they take those interviews where uh, a, the interviewer finds women on the street and it says like, hey, what's one turnoff for you in a guy? And then like every answer is something like, I hate it when a guy, when you go to a guy's parents' house and then like he gets kissed on the cheek by his mom and then the list is on like number 700 now and like, it's like, don't, 
get scared when you're, it seems like your plane is crashing. Don't like uh, listen to music on wired headphones. And he's, the scrolls like all the way. And then at the end is like, don't kiss your mom. Turn off. I could find a man really, really, really hot. The second he sends me an Instagram reel, you're done. <laughs> It's just funny, okay? It's not as serious. When he eats tomato pasta and the sides of his mouth go red. That one kind of gives me the ick, though. To be honest with you. Those women are serious, though? Yeah, but not all of them have all 700 things, dummy. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Some women would be like, come here, you got a little red on you. That would give her whatever the opposite of the ick is. Also, they're like 19 years old and fucking wasted at the bar when they get asked the question to begin with. <laughs> it's like they don't know. They're out of their minds on any, any kind of cocktail of legal and illicit substances. You can't take it that seriously, man. It's just, it's just trolling. soul it's got a lot of heart and soul i don't know the rest of the words but it's got a pretty good baseline pretty good baseline heart and soul my wife is streaming mahjong monday's pog i'll send you right over to her stream hope you have a great rest of your monday night i'll see you tomorrow for dome keeper pooper burr i scram